Hi, and welcome to the complete course on pandas for absolute beginners. We're going to start by discussing what is pandas. Well, pandas is an open source data analysis library for analyzing, cleaning, exploring, and manipulating of data. If you are thinking about data science and machine learning as a career, then it is essential that one of the first things you have to do is to learn the pandas library. So in this course, I do recommend you have some experience coding in Python. You don't have to be the top level software engineer, but you should have some bases such as list, tuples, dictionaries, functions, and iterations. And if you want to get your hands on Python, I also recommend you check out my Python mastery course for absolute beginners. I will drop the link in the video description. And on that note, let's begin by setting up our development environment and also getting pandas installed on our computer. After that, then we would be ready to do some coding and analysis. Now let's head over to anaconda.com. We're going to be using the Anaconda software distribution to set up our own development environment for this course. So. Anaconda is an open source distribution of the Python and R programming language. And the distribution also comes with over 250 packages automatically installed. So here is the download button for you to save the software on your machine. And you can also download for either Windows, Mac or the Linux operating system. And when it's done downloading, Open the package and install on your machine. Then come back and follow along with me. All right. Now, after the installation, press the command key plus spacebar if you are on a Mac computer and then type in Anaconda Navigator and then hit enter. Or you can go in the application tab and here is the Anaconda Navigator. Then double click to open. So now, if you are on a Windows machine, open up the search bar and then type in Anaconda Navigator and then click on the icon to open. Now here is our Anaconda Navigator and here you can also find other tools used for data analytics and machine learning. But in our case, we're going to be using the Jupyter Notebook. So click on the launch button to open up the notebook and the Jupyter Notebook is going to open in our default browser of our computer. So here are the files and folders inside my computer hard drive. Yours might look quite different due to our operating system. So I'm going to go to my desktop folder and as you can see, my desktop folder is actually empty. Then I'm going to create a new folder. Let's call it pandas course and then hit enter back to my browser. Then here is our new folder I just created from my desktop. So now let's create our first Python notebook. So I'm going to click on new under the notebook. I'm going to click on Python tree. All right. So here is our Python Jupyter notebook. So you can click here to rename the notebook. Let's say 01 pandas. Then click on rename. Now our Jupyter notebook has been renamed. And here on this cell is where we're going to be writing and executing our Python code for pandas. You can click on the plus button here to insert a new cell below. And inside the cell, we're going to write our Python code like print parentheses, then hello world. So to execute this cell, we're going to click on the run button above our cell. And here is our hello world statement printed out on our notebook. And also, Jupyter Notebook automatically added a new cell below our print statement. So now, let's actually import pandas into our notebook. So above our print statement, I'm going to say import pandas as pd. So PD here is going to be the alias we're going to be referring to pandas 
throughout the course of these lessons. So, to execute this cell, instead of using the run button here, we can also use a shortcut. We're going to hold the ALT key and then press the ENTER key. Now we've imported pandas. And if you notice, our selected cell here is highlighted as blue color, which means the cell is not active for us to write Python code. So when I click inside the cell or hit the ENTER key, then the cell becomes active with a green color. So now that we've imported pandas into our notebook, let's now see how we can load in the dataset that we're going to be exploring. So I'm going to erase this print statement. Then I'm going to create a heading. So click on code here, then select markdown. So inside the cell, I'm going to add the hash symbol and then type in load data. Then execute the cell using shift plus space. So to load the data, I have compiled the data set we're going to be exploring. So head over to my GitHub page and then click on the complete pandas course repository. This repository contains the resources we're going to be using in this course, which includes all the data sets and also the Jupyter notebook for our analysis. And I'm also going to drop the link to this repository in the video description so that you can just go ahead and download. So you can click on code here and then click on download zip here to save the whole repository to your machine. And when it's done downloading, extract the folder and then copy out the data folder. So on my desktop, inside our pandas course folder, I'm going to paste the data folder we just copied. So inside the data folder, we have our data which is called sales.csv. So when working with pandas, we will often load data in different file types and not just CSV files. So your data might be in CSV files, excels, or even JSON files. But now we're going to be loading a CSV file into our notebook. So back to our Jupyter notebook. Now, we're going to write the code to load in the cell CSV file we just downloaded. I'm going to say pd.read underscore and then press the tab key. So here are all the file types that you can read in using pandas. So in our case, I'm going to select the read CSV parentheses and in between the parentheses, I'm going to add single quote and then we're going to pass in the file path of our CSV file. Now, if you remember, our CSV file is located inside the data of our project. So I'm going to pass in data, then forward slash sales.csv. And then press shift enter to execute the cell. So here is our data loaded into our Jupyter notebook. So one cool thing about Jupyter Notebook is that it allows us to visualize data. And when we scroll down below, then we can see that our data has 4,200 rows of data and then 11 columns. And these columns are the state, total expenses, product, and so on. So let's store our CSV file in a separate variable. Let's call it data and then execute the cell. So now, if we want to have a look of our data, then we can say data then dot head method and then run the code. So the dot head method returns the first five rows of our data. And you can also pass in a value if you want to see a certain number of rows. Then we can pass in the value 10 to our data.head method. When we run the cell, then this gives us the first 10 rows of our data. And as you can see, it goes down from 0 to 9. Now, let's say you want to see the last rows of the data instead of the first 5 rows. Then we can use the tail method instead. So if we say data.tail, 
then parentheses, and then run the cell. Then we also get back the last five rows of our data. And also, just as the head method, we can pass in a number like 10. And we also get back the last 10 rows of our data. However, let's say we want to check to see the number of rows and columns of our data. Then we're going to say data, then the dot shape attribute. So remember not to put parentheses at the end. And then run the cell. So as you can see, our data has about 4,200 rows and then 11 columns. So in this lecture, we learned how to set up our Jupyter Notebook with Pandas and also loading in our data into Jupyter Notebook. So in the next lecture, we're going to be looking at data frames and also learn about the series data type in Pandas. So on that note, don't forget to hit the like and subscribe button to support this channel. See you in the next lecture. Take care.